Yeah. <laughs> so, good um, good evening. Um, I just want to, uh, you know, make a reaction on today's um, uh, virtual political rally, which was held by the Patriotic Front uh, at Mulongoshi. My my address is not to dwell on what the PF said. Um, I'm not trying to shoot in whatever messages that came in. So this is not an attack on the PF, but uh, this is a patriotic, patriotic address. I'm speaking as a patriotic Zambian, a responsible Zambian. That is the point of view that I'm speaking. So in no way am I attacking the PF. In no way am I attacking the PF. I want to I want you to be very, very clear. In no way am I attacking PF or any political party for that matter. I am simply speaking from a point of view of, you know, a patriotic citizen. Uh, that, is, that is the point of view that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. And um, I want to strongly uh, suggest that ZNBC, um, you know, uh, ZNBC or other public media houses um, uh, desist from um, covering uh, political uh, rallies, you know, either virtual or physical. I strongly suggest that they refrain, they refrain from doing that. And um, why I say this is what is usually brought out uh, during these political rallies. And uh, please get me very clearly. I am insisting on this one. It's not an attack on any political party. A number of these political parties, a number of politicians, what they say during political, during political rallies usually might not be media friendly. It might not be media friendly. It is not something that, you know, you would want to hear, especially on a public uh, media house like ZNBC. It is therefore, it is therefore reasonable to suggest to ZNBC and the other public media houses, you know, the private, I can't touch the public, the private, uh, the private, it's their business. I mean, they want to make money, but for Public media houses, public media houses are not just there to make money. Public media houses are there to save the nation. It's not about the money. That's why the public media houses get funding from government because they get, you know, some, 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 some funding, some supplement from, from the government because it's not just about the money. You know, ZNBC, yes, uh, it has got a business component, but uh, by and large, ZNBC and other public media houses are there to save the people. So they must save the interests of the people, other than, you know, putting it like they're just making money. I know that uh, these, these public rallies which are aired by public media houses, most of the times are paid for are paid for so one may say they are making business but no that is not the objective of public media houses public media houses don't just look at money public media houses look at informing informing educating and entertaining the masses not just about the money and when they are doing that they are a political they are a political so when you get these public media houses to be airing some of these public rallies, like the one that they covered today, surely it compromises the integrity of that media houses. I am very sure that if there are people who are objective, they would agree with me that the public rally, the public, uh, you know, virtual rally, that was held today by the PF, I'm sure if you are just objective, you would agree with me 
that it compromised it compromised the ethics you know the professional ethics of ZNBC if anything I was actually expecting ZNBC to put up a disclaimer of some sort I was expecting maybe the, you know the, the 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 director general to even apologize for some of the things that were said I am I am actually surprised and the, disappointed that up to now you know znbc has not come up to issue a disclaimer because some of the things that were said on that um uh, virtual public rally they were not uh in good taste for building of the nation for the one zambia one nation and of course for the morality of our country as a christian nation I don't think it fitted in that aspect. Those things that I've spoken about, I don't think some of the things that were said there, ZNBC can be proud of. But unfortunately, you can say, yes, it was aired by, uh, it was said by, by politicians. But unfortunately, it is ZNBC platform that they used. They used a platform of our national, national, you know, a television that is not good that is not good things which were said there surely that is not good they were not good they were not good not everything but some of the things which were said they were not good for example i mean the issues of tribe came about you know much as people may have what they may call evidence in talking about tribalism it is not something that you would want to air on a platform like ZNBC much as it may be true much as it may be true you may have the evidence but it is not just a morally right to be aired on ZNBC it is not morally right there are certain things like I had spoken about this some time back that you know there are certain things that you can you, you may have an opinion, but there are certain things that you can say in public. And there are certain things that you cannot just say in public. Much as it may be true, much as it may be an idiom or a riddle, much as it may be, you cannot just say it on a platform like ZNBC. You can't just do that. You can't just do that. So all the excuses that you may have, no, it's politics. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a proverb, it's a riddle, it's an idiom. They don't stand when you are standing on a platform like ZNBC. ZNBC has got its own ethics. Its professional ethics under which they should operate. And if you look at those ethics and you look at what was being said, on that virtual uh, public rally, you can agree with me if you are objective that it was not proper. It was not proper. And I'm asking ZNBC and other public media houses and even those private that really care for the ethics to avoid, you know, airing those kind of, uh, uh, those kind of uh, you know, public rallies or sentiments which were being aired there. It is quite unfortunate. It is quite unfortunate, I must say this. And um, I feel bad that, uh, you know, even myself, where we are coming from, I've participated in that kind of, in that kind of uh, uh, deliberation or kind of messages. I... I want to say I'm, I'm sorry, and I'm not saying this because I'm contesting for, for mayor opposition. I am saying this as a change of heart. I'm apologizing as a change of heart. And I, I hold a view today that that is not the way we should do politics. That is not the way we should do politics. In as much as, in as, much as politics is dirty, like we say, politics is dirty. So it look, kind of look uh, good 
to say bad things about others. I'm just from watching, you know, one of the series that I like um, on one of uh, these uh, paid uh, uh, channels. Uh, it's called Boo. You know, it's a, they are lawyers and whatever, whatever. And this guy uh, was standing as a um, district attorney. And uh, he was strongly, he had a strong view that I shouldn't talk about others. I should talk about me and not to talk about myself. Uh, not to talk about uh, not to talk about other people, whatever wrong things that they have done, not to talk about especially their personal life. I should talk about what I'm going to do. And uh, his sister was insisting to say, no, your friend is going, is going at you, is going on at you, is saying things about you. And they even had a debate where this guy actually lashed out on the other opponent to say, for you, it is not about justice. For you, it's all about money. If you are paid money, you will, you will defend even criminals. This other guy couldn't attack the other person personally, though he had some information about him, you know, being a drunkard, being compromised. But he refused to bring out this in his public campaign. And at some point, I mean, some people pressured him to say, no, you need to go, you need to, to say this. And somebody brought this up. And at the end of the day, this other guy had to withdraw from, uh, you know, from his candidature because what he had was so damaging in the public. He had to withdraw. And I was thinking about my political campaigns as well. I will tell you this, that uh, there are some people who have actually come and brought some, 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 some debt, if you like, some debt against one of uh, the candidates, you know, the candidates for PF. They brought something, no, she did this, she did this, she did this, she did this. I've got about three issues that they have brought before me. And uh, I've refused. I've refused to come out with those, what I may call debt. I've refused to, to bring it out. And in my campaigns, I don't think any one of you would say that one day I mentioned the PF candidate and started talking about uh, her or the PF, attacking the PF. I, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that because I believe this is not the way we should do politics. I, I think it is very wrong for us to continue damning others, bringing debt of others for us to get the votes. I don't think it's good. And also you electorates, you must also desist from entertaining such people. Because the problem is usually with also the electorates. The electorates like it when somebody is coming on a platform or when somebody is insulting, is bringing out the worst about others. You like it. You say, these are the men. These are the people that we want. But by the fact that I insult the other person as much as possible, or as much as I bring out the debt of the other person, does that give me a vision? Does that give me the plan on how I'm going to save you? I can bring up, yes, like I'm saying, that people have given me information about my other candidate that I should bring out this, that this person did this. Because if you must remember, I mean, uh, I've got a lot of friends in PF. They have brought a number of issues, you know. But even if I start talking about her, to say she has done this, eh, she's this kind of, does that mean I will, that I have got a better vision for Lusaka? Does that mean I am a better candidate myself? Because you can bring out whatever debt, but at the end of the day, yourself, you are nothing. You have got nothing to offer. There is nothing of value by, you know, damning the other person, saying bad things about the other person, if you have nothing in yourself. And this is what I'm seeing in this campaign. There is too much of this one, that one, yeah, is a tribalist. There yeah, is what, what, it's what. I mean, what? Fine. 
is all that. Let's agree, is all that. But as you agree that, as, as we agree that this person is like this, does it make the other person that is talking, does it make this person a genius? Does it make this person a visionary person? Does it provide solution? What solution are you giving in pointing fingers at this person when you have nothing to offer? Go and listen to some of the some of the uh, you know the speeches that were made by the people that spoke at the PF uh, virtual rally. Go and listen. Some of them they couldn't say anything to give people hope because. I, what I know is that campaigning is giving people hope. Giving people what they should look forward to when they elect you. That's what I believe is. Giving people hope. Giving people something they should look forward to. Okay, if we elect this person, this is what we will see. This is what we will get. But if you go back there, among some of the speakers... See if they are offering any hope. See if they are giving any promises. Apart from, I worked with him. And this person, he did this. Hey, he did this. Hey, he's surrounded by, by Tongas. How is that giving hope to the people of Zambia? How is that making a promise to the people of Zambia? How is that promising people? I'm not saying what you are saying is not true. No, I'm not saying that. Neither am I saying you are, uh, uh, it is true. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying you are lying or I'm not saying you are telling the truth. No. But the question that I'm asking, you who are out in the campaigns, who are busy pointing fingers at the other person, the, at the other candidates, the question that I'm asking you, does what you say, do what you say, does it, you know, give hope to the Zambian people? Do you give, a, is it a promise that you have for the Zambian people? What promise are you making? What hope are you giving to the Zambian people? What do you think? Tell people what, you, what, they, what, you, what they should expect. You can't have three hours of talking and all you are doing is talking about certain other individuals. A is like this, A is like this, A is like this. Uh, is that the hope that you are giving them? Is that the future that you are promising them? I know some of you would say, but you are doing this, you are doing this. It's true. It's true. But you know, Circumstances, sometimes circumstances put you in a corner, put you in a certain situation. But really, if you if you want to know, this is the this is the real me. This is the real me. Whatever I could have been doing here and there, forget about all that. Forget about all that. Situations, sometimes circumstances put you in certain certain situations, certain positions. And I regret. For some of these things that I did or said. I truly regret. The real person is me. Now you have the real Chilufia. And now you have the real Chilufia. Because God has delivered me. God has taken me out of that position in which I was. I was in that position. I was, you know, I couldn't see. You know, there are some times when things just wear on you. They wear on you. And you're just in it, you're just in it, and you're failing to come out until God himself comes and takes you out of it. Me, without any uh, reservations, without any doubt, I say, the time that I went to Marcel's Muria, whoever put me in Marcel's, he thought he was fixing me, but he was liberating me. He was setting me free. I've been set free. From the bondage I was in. Because before I was just in there. I didn't want to lose friends. 
I didn't want to lose friends. I, these are my friends. I need to work with them. I need to help them. I was so preoccupied in trying to help them. And many times I was just, I was rationalizing things. I, instead of seeing the bad as it may be. Don't think it's about the money because some of you think that no, it's not about the money. No, nothing. It's not so much about the money. It's not so much about the, about the money. It was more, you know, of you know, wanting to help friends. Wanting to help friends, holding on to friends, you know, thinking that this is, this is where my future is. But God came in and said, uh -uh, this is not your future. This is not your line. This is not your line. And God has put me out of that bondage where I was. I am now free. I am now free. I am I'm here in my house. When I go to sleep, I sleep peacefully. I am now free. Whoever put me in my cells, Muria, he thought he was fixing me. And uh, yes, my case is still going on. But I can assure you that case, that case, that case, if some of these people who want to fix me, they might be shamed big time out of that case. They might be shamed. They might be shamed big time and them them ever for fishing. Those of you who continue trying to push me, to push me down, wanting to fix me, I'm telling you, you just never know what is what is what is taking you there because out of this case, out of this case, out of this case, what which you started, I am set free. I am set free. And at the end of the day, some of you will be shamed. Some of you will regret having had taken this route. But anyway, at the end of the day, let me not digress. The point I'm making is that, you know, much as politics is dirty, I think we can do better than what is currently going on. This issue of emphasizing especially on these tribal, 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 tribal. I am not defending anyone. I'm not defending Haka in the Absolutely not. I am not defending Haka in the I've got my own opinion about Mr. Haka in the I've got my own opinion. But I think it is wrong in trying to bring down Mr. Haka in the We are busy talking about these tribal lines, tri, tri, speaking on tribal lines, tribal lines, tribal lines, I think we are making a big mistake. And those people who are obsessed, who are obsessed with winning this election or with impressing President Ed Galungu, because much as I, much as I, uh, I have my own issues with President Ed Galungu, but from my point of view, I don't think Ed Galungu is tribal. I don't think President Ed Galungu is tribal. But people are being so tribal trying to impress President Ed Galungu. You are trying, you are trying so hard. You are trying so hard to impress President Ed Galungu. But I'm telling you, you are making a big mistake. You are making a big dent on our country. This country has been held together from the time of independence. It has been held together. We just we were just we are still mourning. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, who did so well to keep Zambia together. But this, this uh, you know, one-tonely uh, desire to win this election is doing a big damage to our country. Believe you me. You may not realize it, but it is bringing, a, it, is, it is denting this country. It is damaging this country. For example, when you talk about those tribal sentiments, you are accusing HH to say HH is a tribalist. When we are having a meeting, there will be a meeting within a meeting where he will have only Tongas around him. I'm, I'm wondering, what do you think those people who are close, what do you think those people who are close to Haka and H. Lema, what do you think they feel? What do you think Jack Mwimbo feels? What do you think Gary Combo feels? Because Gary Combo now feels that he, He's close to Haka in the Ichilema just because he's Tonga.
And yet, these people may have a, a long personal relationship. He may trust God in Congo because this is a guy that he knows from a long time. I'm just giving an example and I'm giving Gary Combo just as an example. But now you, you come in to say he's only surrounded by Tonga. So all those people that are around Haka Inde Ichilema are Tonga. Are you telling me all those people that are around Haka Inde Ichilema they are Tonga? Are you telling me all, the, all of them are Tonga? I don't think so. I don't think so. Look. Haka Inde Ichilema has a vice president. If he's elected as, as president, he has Nalumango as vice president. He has Nalumango as vice president. So why do you continue pondering on that? Why do you continue hammering on that? Why do you continue hammering on that? He may have been a tribalist in the past. Maybe he may have considered people that are tribal. But look. What are you saying about him picking Nalumango as vice president? What are you saying about that? You talk about Jack Mwimbu is a is a is, is a chief whip in parliament, but you refuse to talk about his vice president. You refuse to talk about that. You say central province, eh, the majority who have been adopted. They, they are Tongas. How do you think those people who have been adopted in central province are feeling? How do you think they are feeling? I don't think this is about HH. I think this is about you trying to campaign on tribal lines. You are just sticking on that. You have dug hills. You have dug hills that we are exposing Haka Inde Ichilem as tribal tribal whatever this is one man even if it is true even if it is true that this man is one is a tribal man why do you have to be bothered about one man why do you have to be bothered about one man one man you keep talking about it no no even if it even if it was true i refuse that for national beauty you don't go and talk about that on a podium like that. And you very people who are talking about Haka Inde Ichilema's tribalism, you were with him. You are with him. Vakanisha's Banda, why didn't you confront him? Vajibm, why didn't you confront him? Vajibm, especially yeah, I don't I anyway, let me not go into the, into the names. Uh, excuse me for that. But let me just leave it. Let me let me go. Let me not talk about it. Let me not start mentioning names. But the point is, you people who are actually talking so much about this, you were with this man. Why didn't you confront him about this? And from my point of view, he may have had it, but surely there is something positive that we can see. I think Haka Inde Hichilema has done so much. More than some of you who are accusing him of being tribal. He has done so much in moving into a national character. Into a national, uh, into a statesman. I think he has moved quite a lot. A lot of us can't even speak Tonga. But Haka Inde Ichirem has even learned how to speak Bemba. Haka Inde has even learned to speak other languages in this country. I mean, what more do you want for a person that is putting up an effort and yet you keep on insisting no he's tribal no he's tribal no he's tribal but i think i think really i think really we may have to look at this guy and say i think he has done something he has done something seriously when are you going to commend him for being today haka in the is able to speak bemba he speaks bemba more than i can actually speak tonga he speaks Nyanja. I mean, what would you want for a guy that wants to, you know, uh, trying to trying to embrace nationality, trying to, to, to have a national character? What do you want? What more do you want? I am not campaigning for him. This is not a campaign for Haka Inde Ichirema. This is to tell you to say, insisting these tribal sentiments, surely, 
they are not helping the country. You are leaders. Some of you, you even boast to say, people love you. You have got a huge following. Even when you are moving, you feel good to say we are the big politicians. So as big politicians, what you say, go a long way. And therefore, you must be more responsible in what you are saying. Especially when you have bought airtime on a national television and you are addressing people. You must be more responsible. You ca Why can't you just promise people, give people hope, tell people what you want to do? Tell people, look, I mean, that's why I like Given Rwinda, for example. I like Given Rwinda. I know some of you say, me, I like Given Rwinda. Given Rwinda, he talks, I mean, the man is so, is so, you know, um, coherent. He's so coherent, he only looks at the PF manifesto. Each time he starts to talk, he lifts his, the PF manifesto. I think that's how the campaign should be. He speaks from the, from, from the manifesto. He talks issues. Even when he's bashing, he's, when he's talking about Bill 10. I mean, you don't see Given Rubinda, you know, going out on personalities. I think this is one man that we should learn from in terms of how we do the campaigns. It is not good. It is not good insisting on this tribal thing. I don't think you are helping this country. You are not exposing Haka in the Ichlema. You are dividing this country. Because the people that you are hating, it's not Haka in the you are hating. You are hating a lot of other people. You are hating them. Please stop it. Please stop it. Let's talk issues. Promise people what you want to do. Edgar Lungu is a, is a good president. He's a good man. Edgar Lungu is a good man. There is a lot that you can talk about what he, he has done. And there is a lot that is in that PF manifesto which you can use to promise people. Why don't you stick to that? Why do you want to make political mileage out of the association that you had with Haka in the Ichirem? Hey, if you are in Angwe, if you are in Angwe, if you are in Shiva, okay, you are in Shiva. No, I'm going to be Haka in the Ichirem. I'm going to be Haka in the Ichirem. I'm a tribalist. Is that how is that helping people with the problems that they are grappling with? How is that helping? In creating jobs for the youths. How is that helping in creating a manufacturing industry in this country? How is that helping in reducing the prices of milimi? How is that helping? Akainde Ichilema is a tribalist. Fine. How is that bringing down the dollar? How is it? How is that? Do yes, let's imagine this guy is so bad. He's devil himself. Fine. How is that helping to make our country better? How? How? No, we are saying this so that people shouldn't vote for him. Uh-uh. Leave that to people. Leave that to people. Tell people what you are going to do. Tell people what you are going to do. This is what I'm doing. I never talk about other candidates. I never talk about other candidates. I'm supposed to be talking so much about the PF candidate, but I don't. And if anything, I will tell you that actually... The PF candidate, we are even good friends. We have even established a good relationship between us. Even just this evening. I was texting her. And I even wrote to her, my last message was, all the best, my dear. That was my last statement to her. All the best. I'm wishing her the best. If she is the better candidate, I'm selling myself, I'm telling people what I intend to do as a mayor. I'm not talking about her, no. But I'm telling the Lusaka people what I intend to do. I've spoken about establishing, you know, a marriage, a council, a, a counseling, a, a Lusaka counseling center. I've spoken about bringing in, you know, transparency, making people know about what is going on in the council, the money that they make, where the money goes. I've spoken about efficiency. I've spoken about development. I've spoken about equity. I've got a daddy as a package, which I'm selling. 
And when you look at my Adebe package, there is nowhere where I'm bringing in the PF candidate or any other candidate. I'm not doing that. And if she does a good campaign, if she does a good campaign, and the people of Lusaka think she's a better candidate than me, they vote for her, I'll be the first one to congratulate her. Or any other candidate that will win, I'll be the first one to congratulate her. In the meantime, I'm doing my campaign. Giving people what I will do. Giving people expectations of what they will see when they vote for Chunifa Tayari. Not how bad the other candidate is. No. I don't do that. So why are you insisting on this man? They shouldn't vote for him. No. The best way you can tell people not to vote for Haka in the is to give people concrete promises. Concrete promises. Feasible promises whereby even people will say, yeah, this is good. At least if I vote for these people, this is what I should expect. That is how you should run campaigns. From this, from, from the way you are campaigning, I'm just thinking that maybe you people don't even understand the PF manifesto. I don't think you do. I would encourage you, those big campaigners, the campaign managers of Ed Galungu, to go and understand the PF manifesto so that when they come out, they talk about the, what Ed Galungu intends to do in the next five years. You are, you are Ed Galungu's campaign manager, but you are not talking about what Ed Galungu is going to do in the next five years. You are not talking about that. All you are doing is busy. This guy, hey, this guy, hey, this guy. I don't think this is good. And I'm not defending him. Neither am I campaigning for him. What I'm talking about here is, you know, patriotism. It's national building. Nam papata. All of you, especially those of you who are emphasizing on tribal, tribal talks, all of you are older than me. You are my big brothers. I am kindly asking you that please, please, let's dwell on the issues. Let's drop this. There are so many people that are being hurt. Some of you, you are even married to Tongas. Some of you are even married to Tongas. And I know it is just because, you know, you are, they are, uh, you are husbands or, they, or, you are, or their wives. They are failing to talk, but I'm sure Chilawa Kalipa, I am sure Chilawa Kalipa, the things that you people talk about, I am sure it pains them. I am sure it pains them. Be very sure that those spouses of yours, I'm sure it pains them. But just because for the goodness of your, you know, the peace in the homes, they don't talk about it. But I'm sure Chilawa Kalipa. I'm sure Chilawakalipa, there is no way that Chilawakalipa is from Mulanda. UPND Abatonga. Eh, ni mumu evantu. Eh, vale for abaka teke kona vena. Ah, ah, ah. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm telling you. You may have those opinions, you may have experienced that, but I'm saying that please refrain from those uh, uh, those tribal lines that you're talking about. Refrain. Please. I don't want to talk about other issues, but a number of issues where, you know, some of the things which were, which were being said there, I mean, I would really put serious questions. When you talk about uh, price comparing, when you talk about, uh, you know, debt swap, but I'm not at a national campaign. So that is not for me uh, to talk about. Um, I'll leave the, uh, that for those who are competing at that level because I think those, those are the issues that uh, you know, we should be competing on. So I will not talk about those other issues. I will let those who are competing at that level you know, to, be competing at, to be competing on those ideas because it's about ideas. Yeah? You know, how can we bring down uh, the prices of... Uh, of, uh, of goods, then how can we sort out the civil servants, uh, uh, you know, conditions of services? 
and their dates and so those are the ideas that you should be talking about so those I'll, I will not talk about that my concern is really just those tribal and kind of hate speech because that's hate speech when you are busy to saying some people don't understand what is hate speech hate speech is simply when you are saying something that will make other people hate the other person people may not understand some don't understand hate speech is simply when you are saying something so that somebody can be hurt somebody can be hurt or other people can hate that person that is hate speech if you say something so that you hate me personally as Chilifatayari, that is hate speech. If you say something so that other people can hate me, that is hate speech. So, you know, let's be mindful of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of that. I think I just thought that uh, I should make this, this, this point. And because of the way people are, are coming out, I am aging. I am aging, especially the public media. To be very careful when they accept money to cover live public li uh, rallies. And I, I think this is the first time that we are having rallies being broadcasted on ZNBC live. It's the first time. It's the first time, at least for me, as far as I can remember, it's the first time. Usually ZNBC, what they do, they will, they will get the, you know, the footage and then air it later. The rally will go on, but then they will come and bring it, they will say we'll air it at 20 hours or something like that. But what happened today, it's very risky, and I'm sure ZNBC, you know what I'm talking about. IBA, I think you also need to come in. You know, IBA, you are very quick to issue, you know, warnings against the private private uh, uh, media houses you are very very quick i think he, on this one i would be very happy if i saw a warning or a letter of caution to znbc to say that was not good because i mean people were insulting people were insulting you can say whatever it is no it was it is an idiom it is a proverb it is, no 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 that was a, those were insults those were insults insults unpalatable that language was unpalatable on znbc on znbc remember when haka in the insulted is it in 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 muchi in not muchi i think it was in muchi i think it was in wapula when insulted remember people were all over talking about it hey he insults he insults he insults he also said something, a Tonga, a Tonga weighed, you know, on ZNBC, uh, or not on ZNBC, on, on one of the interviews, and everybody was all over. But those insults were repeated, and more was said on ZNBC today. What are you saying about those leaders? What are you going to say about those leaders? Those of you who are championing, you know, he has insulted. Yeah, he, he has insulted. What are you going to say today about those people who are insulting? What are you going to say about them? And you are applauding it to say, no, eh? that man can talk. I really think people who resort to insulting or talking bad against others, it's because they don't have something to say. They don't have really something for, for something to offer. I've got a lot to talk about in terms of promising for what I'm going to do for Lusaka that I don't have time to start mudslinging other candidates. All the candidates that are on the mayor opposition have, don't say anything. And my biggest rival is the PF candidate. That is my biggest rival. And yet I have a good relationship with her. Why should you keep on talking about, why should you be doing that? Being so insolent. It was bad. ZNBC, I know ZNBC, it's not a monument. ZNBC is run by individuals. And the individuals in there, the management at ZNBC, I'm sure you, are, you can be courageous 
to look at what is wrong as wrong and say, uh uh, this is against our media ethics. And I'm encouraging you that please avoid, avoid taking money to air out live those public rallies because you can't control some of these politicians. You can't censure them. They have said it and it has gone. But at the end of the day, what are you doing to the nation? What are you doing to your institution? That is a public institution. It belongs to all of us. And we would want to be happy what is being aired there other than what we heard today. It was very unfortunate. So I just wanted to bring to put myself on record uh, on, on this one. On ZNBC issue and the continued tribal remarks coming from some of the politicians i am begging you that please you may be thinking that you are hating haka in the but you are hating a lot more other people please let us refrain let us tell people what they should expect when they vote for us let us give promises to people let us give hope to the people other than you know insisting on hate speech tribalism and unpalatables i don't think uh that is that is good thank you very much and have a good night